Hello, welcome to the March and Odd Show, the cybersecurity show. Let's talk about some things you need to know before switching to Linux, okay? So first we're gonna start with installation and hardware compatibility, right? Linux is generally easy to install on most modern hardware, but it's best to avoid installing it on brand new computers that are, you know, less than one to two years old as drivers may not be available yet. You're gonna to wanna to check hardware compatibility, especially for components like printers, Wi-Fi adapters, and graphics cards. Um, when it comes to software and applications, many Windows slash Mac programs won't run natively on Linux. Look for Linux alternatives to your essential software you know, before switching. Now, Linux uses package managers and software repositories to install programs rather than downloading installers from websites. There are many free and open source alternatives available for common attacks. User experience, Linux is not Windows, right? It functions differently. So be prepared to learn new ways of doing things. There are many different Linux distributions, also known as distros to choose from. Popular beginner friendly options include Linux Mint and Ubuntu. More on that a little later. Linux offers extensive customization options for you know the desktop environment and overall look and feel. Now, when it comes to the file system and command line, Linux uses a different file system structure compared to Windows. There is no C drive. The command line terminal is a powerful tool in Linux. L you know, learning basic commands can be very helpful. Like, you know, now in regards to community and support, however, Linux has a large helpful community, right? Support is often available through forums and online resources rather than centralized customer service. Now, in regards to security and stability, Linux is generally more secure and stable than Windows, more on a little bit of that later, with fewer viruses and malware threats. Remember that switching to Linux involves a learning curve, but many users find it rewarding due to its flexibility, security, and freedom from proprietary software restrictions. Now, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and the like button. So what are the best Linux distributions or distros for beginners? Now, Ubuntu, right? Ubuntu is one of the most popular Linux distributions and is highly recommended for beginners. It features an intuitive genome desktop environment and comes with extensive documentation and community support. The installation process is you know, it's straightforward and, and it includes a software center for easy app management, there's Linux Mint and it's based on Ubuntu. Linux Mint is known for its user-friendly interface, particularly the Cinnamon desktop environment, which resembles Windows. This makes it a comfortable option for users transitioning from Windows. Linux Mint also offers good hardware compatibility and comes preloaded with essential options. You have Zorin OS and Zorin OS is designed specifically for newcomers to Linux with user interface that mimics Windows. It provides a seamless transition experience and allows users to customize their desktop environment to resemble Mac OS or Windows. There is Elementary OS, and Elementary OS is visually appealing and focuses on simplicity and ease of use. It has Mac OS-like interface and is great for users who prefer a clean workspace. It's based on Ubuntu, ensuring good software compatibility. We have POP, exclamation mark, underscore OS, and it was developed by System76, Pop exclamation mark underscore OS is geared towards gamers and developers. It features a user-friendly genome desktop with added functionalities for gaming and programming tasks, right? Making it suitable for those who want a modern experience. You have MX Linux and MX Linux is lightweight and stable, making it an excellent choice for older hardware. It combines the best you know, aspects of Debian with a user-friendly interface, providing a solid option for new users who might be using a you know less powerful machines. We have Fedora, and while slightly more advanced than other options, Fedora can still you know be beginner friendly for those willing to learn. It features the latest software and technologies and uses the genome desktop environment, which is clean and modern. Now, uh, you know, obviously switching to, you know, Linux from Windows is difficult, right? In many ways, but there is a way to, you know, there, there is a method, right? To transition your favorite Windows apps to Linux. So let's cover that right now so that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, tap me on the back. I, see, I got y'all, I got y'all. So some of the key points to consider when transitioning your favorite Windows apps to Linux is 
or R, you want to look for native Linux alternatives first, right? Most, you know, many popular Windows programs have Linux equivalents that provide similar functionality. Uh, check if there are web-based versions of your essential apps. Many productivity tools like Microsoft Office now have online versions that work well on Linux. Uh, for Windows, you know, for Windows only programs, try using compatibility layers like Wine and Or crossover. These allow some Windows applications to run on Linux through uh, compatibility, you know, even though it varies, right? Compati you know, compatibility may vary in, in that regard. So, you know, consider using virtualization to run Windows inside Linux for any must have Windows only software. This allows you to access Windows apps when needed. Gradually transition by using cross-platform apps that work on both Windows and Linux. This allows you to get familiar with the Linux versions before fully switching. So, you know, be open to learning new Linux native applications, right? While they may work differently at first, many Linux alternatives are powerful and customizable. Use online resources and Linux community forums to find recommended alternatives for a specific window program you rely on. For games, check compatibility with Steam's Proton compatibility layer, which allows many Windows games to run on Linux. Be patient during the transition, right? It may take some time to find the right workflow and alternatives, but many users find Linux more efficient in the long run, okay? So this is a long play. Remember, Linux is not Windows, so try to approach it with an open mind rather than expecting it to work exactly like Windows. With some adjustment, more users can find suitable alternatives or solutions for essential Windows applications on Linux, right? Now, you know this is a cybersecurity channel, let's get into it. What can you do to ensure your data is, you know, is secure when switching to Linux, right? Number one, enable built-in security features, right? Activate the built-in firewall, usually, you know, UFW or IP tables to control incoming and outgoing network traffic. Enable full desk encryption during installation to protect data if your device is stolen or lost. Use strong passwords and enable automatic screen locking. Practice good security habits, right? Only install software from official repositories or trusted sources. Keep your system and applications updated regularly. Use a strong user account for daily tasks and, you know, only use root slash admin privileges when necessary. Be cautious when click, you know, clicking links or downloading files, you know, just as you know, you would any OS. Enhance privacy and security, right? Install privacy focused browser extensions like Privacy Badger, HTTPS, you know, everywhere and uBlock Origin. Consider using a VPN when on an untrusted, you know, network or networks. Disable unnecessary services and remove unused software to reduce potential vulnerabilities. Back up your data, right? Set up regular backups and important files to an external drive or cloud storage. Test your bake, you know, your backups periodically to ensure that they, you know, they can be restored if needed. You're going to also want to learn Linux, you know, security basics, right? Familiar, familiarize yourself, right? With basic Linux security concepts and best practices. Understand how to use the command line for security tasks like checking logs and managing permissions. These are the kinds of things that you're going to want to keep in mind if you want to keep, you know, your, 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 your Linux account as safe as possible. Now, just a little nugget for you guys. There are there are well over 42 different kinds of Linux distribution software. You know, we talked about some of them, but just to give you a, just a, a rough a rough you know uh, lineup, you have uh, Garuda Linux, NixOS, Magia, Deepin, uh, Backbox, uh, Vi OS, Kai OS, Parrot OS, you know Linux Lite, Zip Slack. Kate OS, Leaf Project, Super Gamer, Linux, you know, Pin Pin Guy OS, you know, Molly Nix Element OS. There's a whole bunch of you know Linux Lite. You know, there's all kinds of Ubuntu Kylon. Is 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 this? <laughs> You know, there's all kinds of distributions to take advantage of and, and look into. So that's what I have for you today. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you like this video, if you enjoyed the content, if you learned something new, please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe. See you on the next video.